and the benefit of watercolor paper is when you paint on it with water, it soaks in better. And also it doesn't ripple and fold. Let me show you one of the ones that I painted with watercolors on. Here we go. So this was regular uh, drawing paper, but I painted on it with watercolors. And it certainly worked. The watercolor will stick to it, but you can see that it got all wiggly and such. So that's because it's a thinner paper and it's not meant as well for water. So when the water got it wet and then it dried again, it got a bit wiggly, which is okay. But if you happen to have watercolor paper around to go with your watercolors, then that makes it uh, a flatter for you. So if you prefer a flatter effect, then it's good to have watercolor paper. So let's draw. We're going to draw with our jelly pen again. And the reason we're going to draw is because this time I'm aiming for a ink and watercolor effect, which is what I had done here. So you draw with the ink first, and then you paint in with the watercolor. So in essence, you're creating your own coloring book design. If you would rather color in my design, then I will post a version of this which has just got the outline, and then you could print that in color that in. But I'll note again that if you print it on printer paper, you'll have the wiggly issue. I suppose you could print on watercolor paper if you can send watercolor paper through your printer. Or you can draw it yourself. And I advocate that you move to the point of having fun drawing it yourself. Because again, even if the lines aren't straight, I like not straight lines. And it makes it all your own unique interpretation. A benefit of the jelly roll is that when you paint on it with water, the ink doesn't run. You'll find as you practice with this that some types of ink run when water gets on them, and other kinds of ink don't run. So if you're going to be painting with watercolors over your ink, it's a good idea to use inks that don't run, so that way you don't have the black ink uh, swirling in with your colored watercolors that you're trying to do. that can also give an interesting effect. So everything you try is a learning process. Go ahead and just try different things and see what happens. Part of the beauty of life is trying things and see what works and see what doesn't work. And what you think doesn't work, someone else might think is really pretty. So don't necessarily turn down things just because you think that they are not working the way you wanted it to. It's all still a learning process. So here we go. Go up here. And then we go this way and put the little lines in the little box. Put that there. There's the circle thing there. And then we've got the four supports. So this time I'm not going to fill things in with pen because my intention is to fill things in with the watercolor colors. So we've got this part down here. And I'm trying to make my circle a little flatter than I usually do. There we go. And then this around here. So again, this is a Polaris missile, so this is not what Goddard launched, but it's just part of the decorations to celebrate space. And it's located in Auburn, Massachusetts, and it's really cool to go and look. And they do have a replica of the rocket that Goddard did launch in the same park, 
it's just a lot more complicated to draw, so I figured we'd start with something easy here. Oh, my cats are making little noises, <laughs> as cats are want to do. Alright, we'll put a tree over here. For some reason I like drawing these tall, thin trees. These scraggly tops. You draw whatever you want to draw. You draw your own interpretation of things. Little branches. Oh, what should we put over on the other side? Last time we put a space alien UFO. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's put a creature. Space alien creature has come to take a look at this thing. There we go. Maybe it has these kinds of... I seem to like to give things antennas. <laughs> How's that? What else does it need? Huh? I guess things have little tiny arms. Look, he's holding a space camera. Because everyone needs a camera. There we go. Alright, and like I said, I like having sketchy lines looking sketchy, so I'm going to add in some more lines. It gives it a sense of motion to me. I like that rough sense. You draw yours however you want to draw it. You want it rough. You want thin lines. You want thick lines. Whatever you choose is fine. So in terms of the actual place that Goddard launched his rocket, it was not at the park. The place that he actually launched the rocket is over in the golf course. And there's a placard there that you can go see if you want to stand in the actual spot that the rocket was. Alright. So there we go with the starting sketch. this one away since that was the one that was a little dried out. Alright, so now for this version we're going to use watercolors. Alright, you might have at home watercolors that come pre-made for you in little pans. All this is is I bought a empty pan kit and then into each little square I squeezed out tube watercolor. And that way I was able to choose what colors. You can go out and buy tubes at Michael's or Amazon or any of those kinds of things. And that way you can choose which colors you like to use the most. So I like to have these sets of colors available to me. And if one of them runs low, like this one here, then you just fill it back in again from your tube. And then if you decide that you never use one, like let's say, uh, I don't know, this red. Let's say I never ever use that red, so it just sits there. I can always empty that out and rinse it out and put a different color in there that I do use. So it's a great way to have exactly the colors you like to paint with available to you in an easy fashion. Well, let's see. I seem to have only <laughs> wide brushes over here somehow. Wide brushes are certainly useful, but I would sort of prefer to have... Here, let's see if I can this. Here we go, this is a little... Yeah, somehow I'm only grabbing these little square brushes. I wanted a brush little shape more like that. 
All right, so we just get some water. We think about what colors do we want to paint this. Well, let's put some purple in here. All right, so we'll go that purple. So my brush is a little wet. We put it on there, and then we'll paint this in. So when you take a wet brush and add some paint to it, and then paint into a spot, this is called wet on dry. And see how the paint is just going where I touch? That sort of makes sense, right? Because the paint is on your brush. Get a little more water. Get a little more paint. So it goes into that spot. So this is one way of using watercolors, is to have the paper be dry, and then have your brush be wet, and go right where you want it to go. All right. So that's one way to do it. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly so my brush is nice and empty of paint. So now there's only water on the brush. So this time I'm going to paint in just with water. So you can see that it's not doing anything visible because this is just water. And I'm making the area wet. So this area is now wet. And this area here is now wet. All right. Now, when I get a little paint on my brush and I just touch into those wet areas, see how it just sort of blossoms and goes everywhere that is wet? So this is called painting wet on wet, and this gives you a different kind of effect. Because the water is sort of like a little lava lamp. And it goes wherever it wants to go within the area that you made wet. See, so it's not going to go in this area over here because that was dry. So it's not going to go escape until the dry areas. But it'll go everywhere that you made it wet. And it gives it a softer, gentler feel. See, if you look at that, which I painted with the brush, versus this over here, which is sort of filling in loose and gentle. So whichever way you want to do it is completely your choice. You can paint it with water first and then dab in the color and let the color do what the color wants to do. Or you can get paint color on your brush and paint it in directly. Only your choice. So I will do the Wet on dry up here. So the nice thing about painting something local, at least for the people who are local who are watching this video, who are local to Auburn, Massachusetts, is that you can go over and visit Goddard Park. Whenever you have free time, you can see it in person. You can look at it from different angles different points of view. So this time I'm painting it just with water, although you can see I didn't rinse the brush off thoroughly, so there's a little bit of purple left on there. But in general, that's different, just water. Now if I touch in the purple, you see how it sort of blossoms out. So you could just leave those blossoms if you like that effect. Or you can fill it in some more. If you want to give it a richer color effect. But these are all just different things to try. Okay, so different parts of it. All right, so one thing you want to think about when you're painting with watercolors is that you don't want to paint two adjacent areas while one of them is still wet. Because if I were to now paint the areas that were right up against these purple areas, while the purple was still wet, then the new color I was painting in might bleed into the other area that I had just painted, and they would get mixed together. So it's generally better to let one area dry, and it only takes a few minutes, so it's not a long period of time. But it's a good idea to let it dry before you start working on an adjacent area. But what that means is that over here we've got this green tree 
and I'll use a bigger brush because that's a bigger space. And we'll use this one. So now we can work on the green tree. Actually, that brush seems to be a little stiff. All right, try this one. All right, so we'll do the wet on wet technique over here. So get this area all wet first. So we're getting that wet, and you can see that the ink is not running, even though I'm adding water to it. So you'll find out pretty quickly which inks are water safe and which ones will tend to run and turn into a big black soup when you add water. And if you care, it's a good idea to test that beforehand so you can see if that happens or not with the particular ink you've chosen. And if you don't care, then that's fine. Alright, so now we're getting a little green on our brush. And we're just going to touch this in here and see how that blossoms out. And part of the nice part of that is that it creates this lovely dappled effect. And now you can put in a little few darker spots. different green. Add some texture to it. And if you don't have all the shades that I have here, then that's fine because you can also mix things. So you can take some of one green or if you just have one green, that's fine. You can take some of the green that you have and then you can take some of a different color. I don't know, blue. Just take a little blue mix it in there. Now you've got a green blue. And now you can add that in if you want to add a little bit of different color. So you can mix whatever colors you want. There we go. And then you can also think about where the light is coming in your picture. Usually in most outdoor pictures the light's coming from above. The sun's up above and it's shining down. And then you can decide if it's going to be over here or over here. And that'll help decide where the darker things are. Because if the sun's up here and shining down, the top area will be lighter. Maybe we'll add a little yellow up there. And the bottom area will be darker, which is more in the shadow. And heck, let's add a little green tree. Get a tree. Oh, let's add a little more of this green to relieve things. There we go. Alright, so we've not got green on the leaves. Alright, so the purple is still drying, the green is just trying to dry. We've got our creature over here. What color do we want to make him? Another thing you want to think about when you're making your colors is if you have every single color on the rainbow, it can make the picture look cluttered. And again, you're making your own picture, so you should choose what you want to do with your picture. But in general, when people are working on painter paintings, they're thinking about what combination of colors tends to work well together? And you've probably seen when you look at different kinds of images that there are certain combinations of colors that people tend to use. So, for example, in this one, people tend to use orange and blue. That's a color combination that tends to pair up well together. And sometimes you see people use purple, green, and yellow as a combination of, that works together. So if you really want to know about those things, you can go online and there's all sorts of charts that will tell you which kinds of pairings tend to work well. But you can also try practicing and just try different color combinations and see which ones tend to work well for you. So we'll go with the theory that 
purple, green, and gold work well together. And maybe we'll make this little space alien creature gold. I don't quite have a gold here, but I have this yellow color. Maybe also we'll make him a yellow. What will we call him? Maybe we'll call him Frank. What do you think, Frank? Let's fill in his little tail. I think I'll make the rocket yellow too. This purple is probably dry enough that it won't cause too much trouble. I guess we'll find out. I find painting to be very relaxing. Because you sort of stop thinking about all the rest of the things going on in your life. And you just focus on the colors and the shapes, filling in the different sections. I know it can be tempting sometimes, especially if you know people who are very good artists, to compare yourself to them and say, oh, my art's not as good because the lines aren't as straight or my colors aren't as pretty or whatever. But it's good to remember that we are all learning. We're all on a growth point, and even artists that we might think are really good tend to look at their paintings and say, oh, I did this wrong, and oh, I did that wrong. So it's just a common challenge that all of us humans have. And it's a good idea to take a breath and say, I'm enjoying this, I am learning something, and next time I will be better, and the time after that I will be better still. But we all have to practice to be able to get places. And we all have to start somewhere. If we started painting two years ago, then we'd probably be better now. And if we keep painting right now, then in two years we'll be better. And we'll look back and be happy that we practiced right now to get better. So find peace with where you are now. And if you want to be better at something, then just practice at it. But it doesn't make sense to be unhappy with where you are now, because we are all always learning and growing, and that's a good thing. So be happy with where you are now, and if you want to be better at something, then just practice at it. And if you're happy with what you're doing now, then that is wonderful. That is a mindset that many people wish they could achieve, so kudos to you for having achieved it. Alright, so now we've got our purple and yellow gold rocket. Not sure what I want to do with this middle part. It could be green. I'm going to make the sky blue, so I don't want to make it blue. Maybe we'll make it, I don't know. I don't know. How about orange? Give it a little bit of orange in the middle. support bits. Coloring base part. It's a little darker. I'm going to lighten that up a little. The nice thing about watercolors is if 
something gets too dark, you can generally just add a little water to it and dilute it, and the color will get lighter. And if you really want to remove it, then usually you can get your brush wet and you can erase it if you really need to. But it's better not to try to erase things. It's better just to try to go with the flow. So if you paint the gutter or draw it or however you want to sketch it, it'd be great if you posted a picture or sent a picture along to the Blackstone Valley Art Association. We would love to see it because we're going to end up making a slideshow of all the different art that people make. And we'll have a couple more workshops like this to give you different kinds of ideas, of different kinds of paint styles. All right, so see how that's bleeding over right there? I had originally thought about making the top layer a darker layer, but it ended up being a same color layer, and that's okay too. There we go. How is that? We'll just do that. There we go. Alright. Just like that. Alright. So now we've got, we need to make the trunk of the tree. I think I'll make brown. Tree trunks tend to be brown, although remember this is your painting, so you can do whatever colors you want. If you want to make a purple trunk, that is your choice. We'll go with the brown trunk. Here we go like that. Alright. Alright, there we go. That's what we're doing. And now we're going to put in a sky. The sky is a much bigger area, so we're going to use a bigger brush just to save some time. If you have a smaller brush, that's okay too. So, the yellow is still a little wet. And actually the green tree is a little wet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry a bit because if I try to do the sky right now while that's wet then I can have the problem with the color merging into the other colors and we want to avoid that. Alright, so we're going to put this one to the side. Alright, so now we want to make the background of this one blue. So I'll just make sure that the brush is pretty clear. Push that out of the way a little bit. Alright, so now we're going to make this wet over here. And we're going to get the water on here. And bring it down here. Bring it over here. And then we'll go this way. And go this way. And we'll do this. So again, if you note, know, I'm able to paint over the legs without the legs bleeding or anything because this is a water resistant pen so it's just something to think about when you are choosing what to draw with all right so give it some blue i happen to like that blue i will use the same blue 
Oh, you can see how it blossoms out because we're painting into wet water. And I like that way that that does that. Gives it to me a natural look. But you can do it however you want to do. Your painting is your painting. You're going to need to get a smaller brush to do that little inside of the curl area. There we go. Go down over this way and over that way. And there's going to be, well, I suppose he should already be in the grass. So <laughs> I've already brought this guy down too far. That's all right. I got distracted with my love of blue. That's okay. We'll fill in the grass afterwards. It's all right. And then we'll go this way and down and around the tree. Now I have to be a little careful here not to get too close to the tree because I need to make sure that my new blue does not blend in with the green, which is not quite dry yet. So if it blends in, then that's okay. But if it doesn't blend in, then that would be better for my purposes. So we'll find out what this does. So we're going around the leaves. We're going around down here. Oh, see, look. I put a little bit of the green in it. came out. Oh, so that's what happens. Not the end of the world. If we had longer time, then I could have let it dry for a little longer, but that will be fine. Go like this. Go like this. Alright, I can get a little more blue. But see how that blossoms out? I think that's very pretty. Alright, so we'll go this way. Go down that way. And go like this. I just love the way watercolors look. I love the glowiness of them. And they're also fairly inexpensive, and they're also pretty much non-toxic, unlike oils or some other things. I like the way oils look, but I get nauseous when I have the smell around me too much, so I'm just not meant for oil paints. That's okay. We all do different kinds of things. Watercolors are quite fine. Alright, let me switch to a smaller brush so I can get into some of these little nooks and crannies. Alright, go around his little head, go around his tail. Paws on this right now, you're gonna have wet paws. Mm -hmm. Luckily, this is um, non toxic because Kitty likes to drink it. If I had been painting for longer, I wouldn't let her drink out of the water because it would be leftovers of the paint in there. But right now, we've barely used it, so water is reasonably clean. And also, She's generally a good kitty, so I don't want to have to argue with her about trying to drink some fresh water. If she wants fresh water, she can have fresh water. Although, you know, she has her own water. <laughs> she has a water fountain that's constantly flowing water. And she's got other water sources. But she just likes to be where we are. That's okay, too. You are a good kitty. Yes. You're a very good kitty. Now that that's no, don't put your paw on. Oh, oh, all right. Well, now we've got blue green colors mixed together in a kitty paw ship. But that is all right. Everything will be all right. All right. 
fix that down there. We have the little kitty assisted area over in here. Make it a little bluer instead of a little greener. See if we can get this to be a little closer to the rocket area. Everything will be fine. Alright, let's put a little blue in here. There we go, and these little squares. Alright, it's probably a little bluer than we intended to be. Blend out so right. so you know you can wet the brush if you want. And just pull the colors out a little bit to make them merge a little better. But it's up to you. How you want them to merge or how you want them to be bluer in one area and lighter in another area. sorts of stuff. Now we'll add in some green for the grass. So again, normally I would wait a little while so that this green from the grass did not blend in with the blue from the sky. We'll do the best that we can for now. That will be all right. Alright, so then we'll go get some green, like this green. And then we'll go like this. Add this green in. I see the blue had been too low before and now we've just fixed that little problem and brought the green up a little higher. So let's got, well I suppose we have to do the inside of the little ring here. Let's go with the light blue. There we go. to stand out much from the support thing, which I guess it doesn't really need to have to. It would be good if that support thing stood out a little bit better. Let's try to bring some of this on here. There we go. That makes that stand out a little better. Alright, what else do we need? Well, the tree has some good texture. The rocket has good color. To make things look a little more three-dimensional, it's good to put shadows on the darker parts. So let's see. Put some shadows on the back part of this. We assume the sun's up over here. 
and the part that's furthest from the sun gets a little bit of shadow to it. shadow in the middle parts too. green tree has a bunch of different greens in it, which is nice. A little space alien creature is looking a little monochromatic over here. Let's try putting I don't know, a little orange on his belly. How's that? that I like the orange on his face. So what I'm doing now is I just put water on the brush and I'm just lifting out that orange color. And see how it went right back to yellow again? So you can erase things if you want to. And what else do we need? That might be pretty set. I don't know. I feel like there should be something in the sky over here. And then a little orange. Uh, let's do that orange. Oh, orange is beautiful. tend to like things to have little antennas. There we go. Alright. So that is ink with watercolor. You draw whatever you want to with the ink and then paint it in with the watercolor.